106.3 and on DAB on Tuesday morning with Genesis and Invisible Touch. Coming around to 20 past nine. My guest this morning, wow, he's packed a lot into his life. Uh, Brian Jackson is his name. He's the director of Expedition Wise. Morning, Brian. Good morning. Uh, quite amazing. You were just telling me while that song was on your life story in, in 60 seconds. I don't know whether you could sort of recap it before we get on to what you're actually going to talk about. You've done a lot. Yeah, I um, left school um, 18. I didn't actually get the A-levels I wanted to go to uni, so I went overseas and worked as an international youth worker, um, part for the state, part for the church, setting up um, youth clubs on the street for kids who were on the street. So that was all over, first in France, I had to learn a bit of French, and then in Belgium, and then in America, in the US, and, um, and all over, really, all over Europe. So, okay, so you've been a teacher as well? Yeah, from that I came home, became a residential social worker, then went to uni in Bangor, um, did um, sports science and then my PGCE, then was teaching for two years, went into the army for a few years, and I've always sort of been into the outdoors, so then I set up my own company. And you've been a radio presenter? Well, I did, yeah, I did a little half an hour <laughs> show in Belgium, yeah, once a week, so that was quite interesting. A half an hour show once a week? Yep, okay, yep. so you had a little dabble with radio. Yeah, a little then. dabble. And now the director of Expedition Wise Limited, which is based in Wrexham, I think. Yeah, based, well, in Brumbo in the Enterprise Centre there. Oh, yeah. And we um, run charity trips, so for individuals, businesses, and for charities. So we run challenges such as Three Peaks, um, Welsh 3000ers, London to Paris, as well as the big overseas trips like Kilimanjaro, Everest Base Camp. So is this for people that want to do uh, one of these things for charity? Um, there's two aspects to it, I suppose. First of all, is organising the trip itself. And secondly, and perhaps the hardest bit maybe, is actually raising the funding that you, you want to raise for the charity you're supporting. Definitely, as I found out myself on this <laughs> one. Having done lots and lots of trips, obviously the logistics for them and organising for other people, yeah. and they're always the ones raising the money. This is sort of the first time, apart from maybe when I was 10, 11, doing sponsored walks and things, mm. to actually raise a lot of money for a charity myself. So, And that's why you're here today, to tell us about uh, your expedition, which was in November. Now, I can't yep. even pronounce the mountain. Yeah, it's called Chubche. Chubche. Now, it's Chubche. not spelt Chubche, it's, is no, it? It's spelt like Chiboa, which is how I pronounced it for at least a year before I actually got to Nepal <laughs> and they told me differently. So it's actually called Chubche. And where is it? It's in Nepal. It's north of the Annapurnas in the Manang district. So you go around the Annapurna circuit and then head north. Right, okay. I've not heard of the Annapurna circuit. An 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 I can't even say Annapurna it. Annapurna circuit. It's a big walk. It's sort of the two major walks in Nepal are Everest Base Camp and the Annapurna circuit. So the Annapurna circuit is sort of southwest of um, Kathmandu near Pokhara. And it's a famous circuit, it's a 21-day walk. We walked around that for four days and then headed off north into a place called the Lost Valleys, um, Napu, which has only opened up in the last five years, so you weren't actually allowed to walk there until five years ago. And why was that? Um, it's a lot of problems with the Maoists, so the uh, Maoist separatists over there, so oh, the ones right. who killed all the royal family in Nepal. Right. So there's big problems over there, okay. so now they've opened it up and it's become uh, much easier access, but you still have to get permits, etc., even to trek there, let alone climb a peak. So it's, a, would you say, a safe area now or safer? Oh, much safer now, yeah, yeah much, yeah. much safer. Um, and this is an area that's not really been explored by Westerners? No, some people have trekked through it, and there's a, um, a few treks set up there, but not um, quite a few of the peaks are unclimbed. Because the Nepalese government only open about 100 peaks every six or seven years, and they're new peaks to be climbed. Right, okay, so you wanted to do an expedition and, and raise money for a particular charity that we'll discuss in a moment. Why on earth did you choose a previously unclimbed mountain in an area which, until very recently, was rife with political turmoil? I suppose just saying that's quite romantic, isn't it, straight away? <laughs> <laughs> to go to a district where nobody's walked. Um, all my life I've wanted to go somewhere where nobody's been. Um, there's a lot of people doing, obviously, Seven Summits and, and other major peaks, and they've been climbed before. So for me, it was to do something that nobody had done, to walk where somebody nobody would walked before, to put my foot where nobody had ever been, and to do something totally new and experience that. Yeah, because there can't be many places left on planet Earth which are untrodden by human foot. No, there aren't. There's um, a few more peaks in Nepal, and then probably the most unclimbed region of peaks are either in eastern Greenland, or on the border of China and Kazakhstan. So Chobche, the mountain that you uh, ascended, is 5,640 metres. How does that compare to, to Everest? Oh, it's incredibly low <laughs> compared to Everest. It's, um, I mean, Everest is 8852, so much, much higher. It, right. I mean, it's still, you still have problems with altitude, but um, as soon as you get to about two and a half, three thousand metres, you can have issues of altitude, but it's much, much lower. Um, that's one of the reasons we chose that peak, because there's a list of peaks that are unclimbed. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I chose the smallest one. Well, I don't blame <laughs> you. I, don't, I mean, that's not that small, though, is it? 5,640 metres. But w if it's so much lower than Everest, yep. why is that unclimbed? Um, because it's never been opened up. 
so officially you can't even go to that region. So unofficially you could have gone there and tried to sneak in and climb it, um, which was always an issue because obviously when we got there we wanted to know had anybody climbed it. We asked all the locals, we asked the local llama and the local yak herders and they said they'd never seen any westerners on that region um, and it was a holy mountain for the locals as well so they wouldn't have allowed people up unless you got permission from the llama so we had to go and see the local llama and get his permission and his blessing to go up um, because it's a place of deities. Che means place of deities. Mm. Chub, we don't really know what that means but Che, that's what it means. So, and I think a lot of people who do unclimbed peaks go for the big ones because, uh, you know, the 6,000ers, 7,000ers, because there aren't many of those left. There's right. quite a few of the five and a half, five, six, five, sevens left. So how many people were in your group then when you went up? Three of us, three from the UK went, and we had two um, Sherpas with us as well. Okay, so, I mean, how do you, how do you even go about preparing for something like that? Well, because obviously I'm um, quite often out in the mountains anyway. In fact, the week before I was climbing with Brian Robson and Kevin Moran up Kilimanjaro, leading them up Kilimanjaro, so for Manchester United Foundation. So I'm quite often out during the year leading treks etc so I had all the kit and the two guys who went with me both work for expedition wise so they'd had all the kit as well and they do a lot of mountaineering um, and then it's just getting the maps together finding out about the region talking to the Nepalese government we spent three days actually in Kathmandu getting all the permits talking to the government and asking about all the different things that we needed to know and then even when we got to the region we had to go and visit the local llama and the local people and say you know where's the best place is there water on the mountain do you know of any places mm. you know where you get water for the yaks etc so we can go and camp somewhere near there and was it a smooth ascent no problems up to the top and then straight down again Sounds easy. <laughs> when you put it like that. It wasn't as easy as that. But, um, one, of, one of the guys, Ian, he got very ill. So he had um, a chest infection. So he couldn't actually make the summit at all. Um, Bug, the other guy, he, he, he had... Um, Dietary issues, shall we say? Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I think we know where you're going yeah, with this. Exactly. Yeah. And had problems. It's a breakfast show, isn't it? I had problems in that side of things. So um, he couldn't make the first two because I actually went up two unnamed peaks first of all with one of the Sherpas, and we named those, and they're also unclimbed. So that was sort of an acclimatisation, and then we went for the main one. So when we went for the main one, it was myself, Bug, and then our two climbing Sherpas. And altitude sickness kicks in. You said at what two and a half thousand, three thousand meters. Yes. What happens when you suffer from altitude sickness? What is it? Oh, it's, it's quite hard to explain, but it's, um, I mean, you get headaches and get nausea, um, you get breathlessness. It's a pressure differential, so it's really hard to breathe because we have a normal pressure in our body that pushes the oxygen through our lungs into our capillaries. But what happens is that pressure changes mm. and it actually gets harder and harder to breathe. And then you get all these other problems. And obviously you, there are issues that you can die from, like high altitude pulmonary edema, high altitude cerebral edema. But most people will get some sort of acute mountain sickness, AMS, at some point. That's God's way of saying don't go up a mountain. <laughs> that might well be. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, we'll talk some more in a moment. Brian Jackson is my guest this morning. He's the director of Expedition Wise, and he's just conquered a previously unclimbed peak, Chub Che. The night, the night, oh yeah. Bastille of the night on D106.3 and D on DAB. Brian Jackson is my guest this morning, the director of Expedition Wise, and we've we've spoken a little bit about your expedition, Brian, up Chub Che, a previously unclimbed peak. You managed to make it to the uh, to the summit. How long did that take? Um, well, it took us um, seven or eight days to walk in, and then we did an acclimatization um, trek up to unnamed and unclimbed peaks, and got to name those and then had another rest day and then went up. The actual peak itself took 11 hours going up and down. And what's it like when you get to the top? Uh, it, it was phenomenal. The, the snow conditions on the way up were atrocious, so they were basically waist deep, so we're falling through the snow. We thought it'd be nice and crisp and, you know, be on cramponing on the top. But actually, we were wading in the snow, really, which made it really, really hard, and we're actually overheating because of all the kit we had on. But as soon as we hit the ridge, we sort of stripped all most of our kit off, dropped our day sacks because we're coming back down to the same place, and then went up the ridge, and the views were absolutely spectacular it's beautiful weather awesome views all around you have a whole annapurna as you can see the tibetan pla um, tibetan range in the distance so the border and chulu range and all the other mountains so it it's pretty amazing literally be able to see for hundreds of miles oh, yeah, from, from that height yeah, definitely. you know it's uh, phenomenal. And you can see all that area but apart from the people you're with you won't see anybody will you no there's i uh, couldn't see any, another soul no there's no be villages amazing. anywhere nearby totally amazing now, um, you've chosen to support doing this expedition, Pancreatic Cancer UK. Tell us, tell us why. Yeah, a friend of mine called Arnold Black died um, November 2012 um, on the 14th, and he died of pancreatic cancer after a struggle for a couple of years with that. So I decided I wanted to support him. He is local to me in um, Koi Poith, so I wanted to raise money for Pancreatic Cancer UK. It's one of the worst cancers to get. Um, it's uh, one that most people will die of. It has a very, very poor rate of um, survival. Mm. 
And I understand that you named a previously unnamed peak after your friend, didn't you, yeah, while you we were did. there? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, t two of the peaks I said we did as sort of acclimatisation went over these two peaks that are on the opposite end of the whole range. The range is called the Chomo Chomo Danda, and on the other end, so it's about 6k away from Chubche, were two other peaks that were unclimbed and unnamed, and we did those. So one, facetiously, we called Just I Dada, which means just a hill. Because my Sherpa went, oh, that's just a hill on the way to the other one. So we called it that. To and him then, it may have been. Yeah, to him it may have been. It was a struggle for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to the one on the end of the ridge, which is a, a black peak. It's got no snow on it. It sticks out. It's pure rock. Um, so Kalache means black peak, and also Arnold Black. So it's named after him as well as being appropriate to the area, so called Calache. That's lovely. And I know your initial target was £5,000, but you've altered that slightly because uh, you want to do, is it 5,640, the number of metres that Chub Che is high? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, it's a bit, um, bit cheeky because we got over the 5,000. So yeah, we thought, right, we'll have some more, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> raise that total and make it to the height of Chub Che, 5,640. Yeah. So we're at 5,200 at the moment. But we've got this evening on Saturday where we're showing sort of a film that we've made from all the clips um, that we took on the way out from head cams and, and cameras and, and film footage that we took on the summit. Okay, so this event, let's talk a bit about this on Saturday evening. It's free for people to get in, yep, isn't it? Totally free. Free tea and coffee. What's the free film? film premiere? So it's going to happen at um, the Community Church, 15 Prices Lane in Wrexham. Um, postcode is Lima Lima 112 November Bravo. So LL11 2NB, Prices Lane. It's at 7 p.m. Um, just come along, have a look. The film's about 40 minutes long, so it's not a crazy long evening. Mm. But also there, there'll be lots of gear for sale, so lots of climbing gear, new and old, that I brought from Nepal and my, my climbing gear. There'll be some um, limited edition prints of Kalache and of Chubche that one of our guys did, so he actually painted, and we've got some limited edition prints to sell. So it's all, everything that get sold and everything that's done on that evening goes towards Pancreatic Cancer UK. Well, that's excellent. And that should take your total above the 5,640, so. which is your second target. It is, correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to leave it at that, aren't you? We are, yes, we are. <laughs> but you're going to do another one next year? Yeah, the idea is to go back in November this year. So November oh, the, this yes, year this now. year now. now yes, yeah, we are, yeah. aren't we? I we keep are. forgetting that. Oh, I do as well, yeah. So we're hoping to go back again in November. We've got two or three people who are interested and it will go on our website. Um, we're going to go to the same region, so the Lost Valleys, Napu, and the peak we're going to climb is called Napu Peak. Again, unclimbed peak, a bit higher, 5921, so just under 6,000 metres. Um, and we're going to take hopefully four, five, six people there and trek in. And because we don't want to do what we did this time, which was trek out for six or seven days, we're actually going to get helicopter out back to Kathmandu, so it'll be uh, much quicker out. It'll be an amazing adventure again, I'm quite sure. So, yeah. How many unclimbed peaks are there remaining? Um, are we in numbering them in single figures? Or? No, no, there's probably a hundred odd in oh. o over in um, Greenland, and then on the border of China and Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, there's probably 150, and in Nepal, there's probably a couple of hundred. Oh, well, that'll keep you going then for a I few so. years, won't it? <laughs> <I think so. laughs> it's great to meet you, Brian. Thank you for coming in and uh, telling us your story. And uh, that evening, if you'd like to see the film, The Unclimbed Peak Expedition, it's at the Prices Lane Church, Roasty and Wrexham, ll 112 nb It's free to get in, and it's seven o'clock this coming Saturday evening. Brian, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Brian Jackson. Traffic and travel with Fords of Winsford. Over four